Have you ever wanted to be your own boss? Use your Atlassian product expertise in new ways or experiment with different environments and challenges. If you've considered starting your own consulting business or side gig, I'll help you take the first steps. Hi, I'm Rachel Wright, certified JIRA administrator and author of the JIRA Strategy Admin Workbook. My goal today is to inspire you to try something different in your career, in your personal life, or both like I did. Today, I'll share how I built my Atlassian consulting business, so you can too. I'll share my consulting journey so far and some tips to help you either take the first steps or take it to the next level. Let's get started. So why am I speaking today? If you're a solution partner, there's an official Atlassian partner program to help you grow your business and get customers. But for small independent consultants like me, there are very few resources available. Most of us have technical skills and maybe not as many business skills. I believe this audience is underserved, so I wanted to create some content and materials to help others be successful consultants. Now, I'm not a business coach and I don't know everything, but I have years of experience running multiple small businesses and I've learned a lot along the way. By sharing my story, maybe I can help others in their journey. So here's my story with some tips, recommendations, and mistakes along the way. I can trace my interest in technology back to two key events. First was when I got my first computer, a Commodore 64, in the 80s. I loved playing games and learning DOS commands. The second event was thanks to my fear of calculus in high school. I'm horrible at math, so I asked if there was a different class I could take instead. They put me in an experimental, non-credit class with all boys. The goal was for us to teach ourselves web design, graphic design, and video production. I learned HTML, created the school's first website, and earned an internship with the company hosting the web server. I loved web design so much that I often skipped other classes to spend more time in the computer lab. That leads me to my first recommendation. Do what you love. Life is too short to do anything else. If you're not happy with your life or career, it's up to you to change it. It's not up to your boss, your HR department, or your spouse to fix. I know that I love creating things. First, it was creating websites, and now it's creating Jira content. But creating has always been the common theme. Before you do anything, start by answering these questions. What do you love? What problems can you solve for others? Think about the major problems all organizations have. Now think of the expertise and experience you have solving those problems. Make a list. Now rewrite the problems in terms of features and benefits. I like to use the format, I can do X so you can do Y. It's kind of like writing a user story. Instead of saying you're a skilled JIRA administrator, say, I'm skilled at building JIRA workflows so teams can track their work and leadership can monitor progress. Or if you're a team lead, say, I coach the team into hitting deadlines so the company could make the most out of their main revenue generating channel. Next, write down any experiences or perspectives that make you unique. Here's my example. I have a unique set of skills and experience you won't find elsewhere. As the founder of a web development company, I understand business, software, development tools, and have lived the software development life cycle. As a prioritization specialist, I help businesses and IT teams analyze, prioritize, schedule, and track strategic company projects. As a certified JIRA administrator, I thoroughly understand JIRA configuration, best practices, and how decisions today affect the application in the future. I literally wrote the book on JIRA strategy and effective administration. My consulting experience is diverse, helping development, support, and business teams in different industries and environments. Finally, I'm well known in the Atlassian community as a frequent speaker, user group leader, and community champion. This uncommon combination of skills and experience creates a deep understanding, holistic, and informed approach for setting up, cleaning up, and maintaining Atlassian applications. That's my example. Now write something unique for yourself. Now that you know what skills you have, figure out what skills you need. For example, my background was Jira Server, so when Cloud came around, I had to learn to be comfortable in that environment too. Next, determine your financial needs. Are you simply trying to add a little more to your monthly salary, attempting to replace your monthly salary, or trying to get rich? Write down a realistic goal and a big goal too. It's important to know that revenue each month will be different, so you need to plan for that and know whether you're meeting your needs or not. Next, determine your overall business goals. What things need to happen for you to consider yourself a successful consultant? For me, I want to enjoy what I'm doing, create things that don't exist, 
and be recognized for my efforts. Figure out what your primary motivations are. Next, under what circumstances would you stop consulting? Think of some good reasons, like Atlassian wants to buy my app, or some bad reasons, like you don't enjoy working for yourself as much as you thought you would. Finally, before you start, think of what you would do if this just doesn't work out. I'm not much of a risk taker, so I always have a plan B and a plan C. I've created some materials and worksheets to help new consultants take the first steps and existing consultants increase their professionalism. The first worksheet helps uncover your strengths and determine competitive advantages. Download it at the URL shown. All right, back to my story. Before I even started college, I was building websites for local organizations. I started a company and completed 150 web projects to help clients automate business tasks, communicate with customers, and close sales online. I was fully invested in web development and was sure I'd do it my entire life. After college, I continued to run my business, sometimes full-time and sometimes while pursuing other career opportunities in my field. That brings me to the next topic. There are many ways to consult, and each has pros and cons. I flipped back and forth between a side business and a fully independent model multiple times through the years. If you're just starting out, it might be safest to start a side business while keeping your current job. This will allow you to try it out at your own pace. Another option is to keep your current job, but transfer from employee to consultant. This may give you more freedom and autonomy without being fully independent. Regardless of the model you choose, I encourage you to talk with a professional. These options all have different legal, tax, and insurance implications. Whether you're planning a part-time or full-time business, you can also be creative with client relationships. There are so many marketing, management, and technology consulting companies out there that don't have in-house to your expertise. When these companies have a client with Atlassian software, you can fill that gap. This is a great option because the consulting company acquires the client, maintains the client, and bills the client. You can focus on the specific project, and the consulting company does the rest. Additionally, you can have one large client that takes up most of your time, or many clients with smaller projects. I've done all of these over the years. Next, you might choose to focus on specific long-term work, like ongoing support and maintenance. Or you might prefer many successive projects like implementation, cleanup, or migration. As you can see, there are many possibilities. Be prepared for what you initially do to change over the years as you grow and the needs of your customers change. In the beginning, I didn't always make the best project decisions. When you're just getting started or when business is slow, it's tempting to take any project that comes your way, but don't do that for long. It will only make you hate your work. It's important to define the types of projects and clients you want and the types you don't want. When you're speaking to a potential client, you should be interviewing them as much as they are interviewing you. Make sure your values align and your expectations match. If initial discussions don't go well, that's a sign to pay attention to. I have two examples. A company wanted to work together on a brand new idea. We were excited about it and lined up resources for our involvement, but they weren't ready or organized enough to execute properly. We spent a lot of time talking about the idea, but ultimately it never happened. We shouldn't have let the discussions go on as long as they did. Another company wanted to work together to share content and reach a new audience. They were the industry expert, but didn't have any agreement paperwork for the type of partnership they wanted. I had to write the agreement, which should have been an early indication of future problems. As I mentioned, I thought I'd be a web developer forever. Then, in 2011, everything changed. I fell in love with Jira and my life would never be the same. I was using a bug tracker that only ran in an obsolete browser version and regularly corrupted data. But Jira seemed so much better. I was immediately impressed with how flexible and customizable it was. That leads me to how important it is to choose the right tools and the right number of tools to power your business. If you're just starting out, you probably need tools to market your business, communicate with customers, track your work, record expenses, and take payments. Mature businesses probably need additional tools for robust processes like supporting customers, nurturing leads and deals, and managing campaigns. You probably also want integration between the tools. The worst software decision I made was the e-commerce software I used to sell content on my website. I did a lot of research, and since I had web development experience, I thought I was making an informed choice. But I went wrong in two ways. First, I chose software that did way more than I needed it to. 
I thought it would be smart to choose with future growth in mind, but I never ended up using all those extra features I thought I'd need one day. The other mistake was I let the software get out of date. I was too busy consulting to properly keep up with software upgrades. I should have either made time for it or outsourced it. Instead, I'm stuck in a situation where the only way forward is to migrate to new software. It's a long, painful, and expensive process, and I did it all to myself. The lesson here is to outsource anything you're not good at, don't love, or don't have adequate time to do well. The next pivotal events in my journey were when I was given application admin permissions, when I attended my first Atlassian user conference, and when I became an Atlassian community leader. I was slowly leaving web development behind to focus on Jira administration instead. At the Atlassian user conference, I marched right up to the community desk, hoping to join the local user group in my area. When I learned there wasn't one, I volunteered to start it. I formed my local chapter and grew it to 288 members. That's a lot of friends and contacts that I didn't have before. While I'm no longer running that specific group, I stay involved by speaking for other groups. I highly recommend getting involved with the community so you can establish yourself and grow your network. Atlassian has a close-knit ecosystem that other industries only dream of. It's full of users, fellow independent consultants, solution partners, and Atlassian employees. It's a great way to network with potential clients and partners, hear about new product features, share your expertise, and learn new things. Join your local user group or start one. Also join the online community, which has millions of members. I'm happy to be part of this community, both personally and professionally. Okay, back to my timeline. In 2015, my life's trajectory drastically changed again. My partner Chris and I wanted to live somewhere else, but didn't know where. We decided to sell our stuff, buy a truck and a travel trailer, and see the United States. Essentially, we're digital nomads. Wikipedia defines this as people who use telecommunications techniques to earn a living and conduct their life in a nomadic manner. Essentially, we work remotely, which is common these days, but we're also location independent. We move from town to town, and we can work anywhere there's good cell service. Between my consulting business and my travel lifestyle, I enjoy total personal and career freedom. Ellen Goodman, an award-winning American journalist, says, Normal is getting dressed in clothes that you buy for work and driving through traffic in a car that you're still paying for in order to get to the job that you need to pay for the clothes and the car and the house that you leave vacant all day so you can afford to live in it. This is exactly what we were doing and we were tired of being normal. We were tired of living up to someone else's expectations for the kind of life we should have. So, we hit the road in search of some different scenery. Along the way, we caught some big fish, hiked mountains and trails, explored arches and canyons, climbed into cliff dwellings and caves, and did a lot of networking and sightseeing along the way. We're currently in Florida, which is one of our favorite states. I'm not trying to convince you to buy an RV and take your life out on the road. I know that's not the right lifestyle for everyone, but for us, it's fantastic. It forced me to reevaluate what was important in life and create a work-life balance that I simply didn't have before. I challenge you to find small ways to change your perspective and scenery every now and then. It could be as simple as working at a coffee shop for an afternoon or working at the client's office for a week. Sometimes when I need to get something important done, I lock myself in a hotel for a few days. The physical change helps me focus and get things done. Remember I told you about my worst software decision? Here's my best, and it helped me with work-life balance. I took my own advice, and I outsourced meeting scheduling. Using a service where clients schedule their own meetings changed my life in two ways. First, there are no more back-and-forth, are-you-free conversations. I simply send customers my booking link, and they choose a time both of us are available. There are no more surprise meetings or double bookings. Second, this allows me to set a specific amount of availability and reserve hours for focused work or downtime. For example, I don't take meetings before 10 a.m. This allows me to eat, meditate, prepare for my day, and accomplish something before meetings and email take over. Also, I don't take meetings on Fridays. I use Fridays as catch-up days, or if I'm on track, I take the day off. Outsourcing meeting scheduling was truly a great decision, and I highly recommend it. I've compiled a list of the tools and services I love and use to support my consulting business. There's recommendations for scheduling meetings, invoicing clients, thanking partners, hosting your website, 
and managing business travel. Download the list at the URL shown. 2016 was a big year. I was one of the first year admins to get certified. I started my current consulting company and I published my first book, the Jira Strategy Admin Workbook. I wrote the book because I knew I wasn't the only admin to inherit a messy configuration. The book is not documentation, it's about strategy. It's recommendations from years of cleaning up horrible Jira configurations. This is the book I wish I had when I was learning. I wrote it in Confluence and tracked my progress in Jira. It only took me two years to write. The book was a lot of work, but it was worth it because it helped me establish myself as an expert. When I get a new lead, I don't need to spend any time convincing the client to work with me. I just need to close the sale and do a good job. There are many ways you can establish yourself as an expert. First, be a leader and an active voice in the community. You can do this by helping others, answering questions, and starting discussions. You can also speak at events or sponsor them. And finally, my favorite is to create helpful content like articles, apps, books, and other materials. Now that you've done some background work, it's time to get your first client. At this stage in your journey, you're likely focused on outbound sales. This is pure prospecting to others who haven't expressed an interest in your service yet. Start by informing your network that you're available to solve specific problems. Choose a few ideal companies you'd like to work with and ask your contacts to connect or introduce you. Sometimes it's as easy as simply asking if an organization needs your help. And be specific. Figure out a problem that they have and pitch them on the solution. Next, don't forget to ask people you've worked with in the past for referrals for your new venture. Anyone who's previously recommended you might be helpful again now. Finally, sometimes the easiest way to get your first customer is to volunteer your services. There's probably an organization in your community or a nonprofit that could really use your expertise. Offer to help at a discounted rate in return for a future testimonial. The key is to keep forward momentum so your first client leads to the next. Here's the message I sent to clients when I transitioned my company from part-time to full-time. Use this example to craft your own announcement. Download the example at the URL shown. In 2017 and 2019, I accomplished a personal goal. I spoke at the Atlassian User Conference. My next personal goal is to deliver an Atlassian Conference keynote. Attending Atlassian events is a great way to meet new contacts and grow your network. In between events, you can also leverage social media and your own website. Make sure that your website has a way to capture leads. It could be as simple as a contact form, a lead gen form, or a blog subscription form. Next, don't overlook the great resources in your neighborhood. A Chamber of Commerce is a local business network that exists in over 100 countries. They host regular networking and business education events. I met many clients and even my significant other at a Chamber event. Also look for local business development centers and schools. Community organizations are a great way to learn business skills, practice networking, and meet new clients. For example, I won a business plan contest and picked up a new client at the awards dinner. Your network is all around you and you probably already have many contacts to utilize. Here's a networking and content tip. Always approach your audience from a helping perspective, not a selling perspective. If I say, hi, I'm Rachel Wright and I want to sell you something, well, no one's interested. But if I say, hi, I'm Rachel Wright and I can help you get your users to log time on their JIRA issues, well, that approach is much more effective. Always try to be a helpful resource and source of information. If you're the one with the answers, people will come to you with their questions. And those questions often lead to future sales. One way for independent consultants to compete with bigger firms is to increase professionalism. You could have all the knowledge in the world, but look less competent because of spelling errors in your proposal. You can increase your professionalism and compete with a good portfolio that showcases problems you've solved for others. Make sure you have a well-written bio, headshot, and a branded email address like your name at yourdomain.com. Your name at gmail.com doesn't look professional and advertises Google, not you. Make sure your documents, materials, and marketing collateral are well-designed and error-free. They should match your brand and design and communication style. Get some help from a designer or copy editor if needed. Next, sometimes independent consultants lack thorough processes. Take some time to define and document each service you offer. For example, 
Create a project plan that defines all the steps from beginning to end. Create a sample timeline with critical milestones. Define the responsibilities of the consultant and the client for each step in the process. Also write some reusable wording so you can create templates to communicate with your clients. Finally, create a checklist of everything you need to do and all the information to collect for each new client. Having a specific process to follow will save you time and improve your consistency. Download some process examples, communication templates, and my new client checklist at the URL shown. Finally, you're never done learning. An Atlassian certification or industry course completion certificate is a great way to showcase and maintain your skills. Look for business and technology courses to complement your Atlassian knowledge. Our industry changes quickly. Make sure you are pursuing opportunities to maintain, strengthen, and increase your skills. Check out my tips for studying and maintaining Atlassian certifications. The tests are challenging, but the certification experience made me a better admin. Don't be discouraged if you need to take the exams more than once. In 2018, I started working with Atlassian Solution Partners. I've co-hosted events, written app reviews, completed consulting projects, and created content like use cases, documentation, and explainer videos. Here's me signing books after delivering a workshop for a Solution Partners clients. In 2018, I also hired a consultant to help manage business development efforts and the sales process. Chris Lutz and I traveled together. He's an entrepreneur too and has a background in business development and sales. I needed help in those areas, so it was a good time for us to join forces. We already knew we worked well together. On the left is us discussing website design details in 2009. And on the right is a photo from Atlassian Summit 10 years later. It's important to hire people you trust and whose skills balance and complement yours. I'm an introvert, but Chris loves to talk to leads and prospects, which is important for getting additional clients. By this point, you've probably moved from an outbound sales model to an inbound sales model. Inbound sales is the process of pulling leads to you through marketing efforts. Most of us have many leads and prospects, but commonly we fail to recognize them, pursue them, or follow up enough times to make a sale. How many times do you think you need to follow up to convert a lead? Once? Twice? Invesp, one of the first companies to focus on conversion optimization in North America, says the answer is five. Now you need a process to track and execute all those follow-ups. Your existing customers are likely your best customers. You should create upsells, downsells, cross-sells, and a process for each. Here are some examples. If you've completed an implementation, upsell another product like ongoing support. If you couldn't sell a certain product, try to sell an alternate product instead. For example, if the customer can't afford 20 hours of weekly ongoing support, offer 10. Finally, try selling complementary products. If you've implemented JIRA, maybe the customer could benefit from implementing Confluence too. Finally, if there are no more prospects in your existing list, it's time to cultivate new relationships. There are many ways to do this. You can attend, speak at, or sponsor events that prospective customers attend. You can do advertising campaigns in publications or on websites that prospects read. My favorite idea is to develop referral relationships with fellow consultants and pass leads back and forth. For example, if I'm booked, I'll pass a lead on to a consultant that I like. If they have a project they don't want, they'll pass the lead to me. Regardless of what you do to get additional clients, you need a customer relationship management tool, or CRM, to manage the process. There's lots of great software out there, and there are examples in one of the download files. If you're not ready for a full-featured CRM, you can use Jira. Create a Jira project to track contacts, campaigns, and deals, and create a board to manage your pipeline. There's even lead tracking and sales pipeline templates in Jira Cloud. In 2020, LinkedIn Learning invited me to produce JIRA courses for their content library. I recorded the first of many courses in their California studios. I also worked with a solution partner to write the ultimate guide to JIRA migrations. It's a free 180-page guide to help organizations migrate from JIRA server to data center or cloud. If you're an independent consultant, you know you can't scale yourself. There's a limit to how much work you can personally do. That's why it's a good idea to explore additional ways to bring in revenue. In the beginning, I was doing 100% consulting, but that left no time for anything else, like running the business, 
learning, or taking a vacation. I started developing additional revenue sources that paid royalties. If one source does well one month, it takes the pressure off the other sources. It's also smart to diversify your work in general. What if Atlassian retires the product you specialize in? It's risky to only have one skill. Many consultants and solution partners diversify by supporting multiple products and even non-Atlassian products. Next, think of ways to turn services into products. For example, instead of personally delivering a training session, I created a recorded course. That allowed me to remove myself from the delivery process and use the time for another activity. Finally, it's important to manage growth. What would you do if you had more work than you could handle? You can stay small and hire independent contractors to help you, or you can grow your company and hire full-time employees. Another option is to work with an augmentation firm that supplies their employees to meet your staffing needs. Finally, you could fully outsource entire projects, or you can refer customers to other consultants in the community. There are many options, and all have their pros and cons, depending on your long-term goals. This year, another dream came true. I worked with Atlassian to create a cloud migration runbook and sample communication templates for organizations to customize. It was truly an honor to be asked for my insights. Finally, I want to talk about a feeling that can sometimes stand in the way of success. It's a term called imposter syndrome, and it's defined as doubting your abilities or feeling like a fraud. I have this feeling from time to time. Sometimes I question my skills, talents, or accomplishments. I fear that I won't live up to my own high expectations or match the reputation I've built in the community. When I'm feeling this, I remind myself of this quote. Most days, I still feel like I often don't know what I'm doing. I've felt that way for 15 years, and I've since learned that feeling is called imposter syndrome. The author of the quote is Mike Cannon Brooks, co-founder and CEO of Atlassian. In 2017, Mike gave a TED Talk sharing how to harness imposter syndrome feelings in your personal and professional life. Knowing that this successful entrepreneur has had similar feelings sure makes me feel better when I'm doubting myself. I encourage you to listen to his 15-minute talk. The truth is, none of us knows exactly what we're doing all the time. If we had all the answers, then life would be pretty boring. Just like my journey, your journey will be filled with risks, rewards, successes, and failures. But never let fear stop you from achieving your goals. No matter what happens, stay positive, work hard, keep learning, and be thankful for your successes. Here's the link again for all the downloadable materials listed in the presentation. I'll give you a minute to snap a photo or take a screenshot. Check out these videos for more information on building your Atlassian career and to hear more about my digital lifestyle. Did you know there's a group just for consultants like us? Join my Atlassian consultants, contractors, and freelancers group on LinkedIn. The group has over 500 members, and someone there probably has the information you're seeking. Feel free to ask a question or start a discussion. If you have questions, I'd love to hear from you. Send me an email or connect on social media. Good luck with your JIRA journey, and I'll see you online.